Hello again, and I am Justin Pontarelli, and I am back playing more Interstellar Pilots. So, uh, I have my little brother review my work, and he thinks I should I should continue. So I asked him what else should I do with Interstellar Pilot, and he tells me, show people how to start a uh, a taxi service. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, this will be another, basically like an instructional video. Aimed mostly at new players to the game who would like to know what a good, solid way to make money happens to be. Okay? And nothing is more solid and safer than a taxi service. Okay. Well, let me show you what I recommend and how to do it. So let's, uh, let's load up a file. I'm going to use my, uh, my JSON file on a, on a, in a tiny universe. Okay. I've actually used this file before. Um, it's just three sectors. I've got a nice ship and a base and some money. Let's check it out. There's my girl, the Avenger. Here we are. And if you've watched my other videos, you might recognize the uh, the universe we're in here. Okay. Same file that I used to demonstrate how to take down a Magnus with a smaller vessel and to demonstrate the weakness of the Magnus. Just a quick review in case you are interested or in case you have not watched that video, let's just show you my uh, my properties here. Okay, there we go. Just the one ship, the three turrets, and the scrapyard, which happens to be a repair shop. Which I use at this moment as a weapons cache. All right. So, again, this is not meant for the experienced player, um, but if you're an experienced player watching this, I uh, hope you'll still enjoy it. So, let's uh, get started, shall we? Let's go to Log, Property. Let's actually get rid of the cargo and the turrets. I don't need all that. Let's enter the... Uh, Scrapyard, we might actually have options to buy the ship we want right here. And we, uh, do we? Yeah, we do. Um, hmm, okay. Let's look around though. I want to make sure we have um, a military base nearby. We really don't. Um, let's do it this way then. So guys, just as a quick FYI, if you're relatively new to the game, um, here's a quick pointer. Instead of having to manually fly to whatever place you want to go to by using your ship, once you have a single station, all you got to do is this. Now, first of all, to keep your ship safe while you're out traveling, cloak your current vessel, okay? Especially if it's just sitting out in open space. Go to Log, Properties, Enter your building. Okay? Doesn't matter what it is. I think with the possible exception of a turret. Let me just check on that real quick. Property, turrets. You can enter them. Oh, okay, you know what? Look at that. You can actually... Um, do the same thing from a turret. Alright, that's weird. Okay. But anyway, for the sake of not being weirded out, let's go to our station, shall we? Alright. So you can drop down 60 some odd thousand credits and buy a station or buy a turret and perform the same thing. Okay? Okay, let's go to request taxi. 
And we're going to go right here. Perfect. Okay. This way we can do uh, what I call one-stop shopping. And I'm going to show you guys how to set up a great taxi service, okay? Uh, now, first of all, let me show you my recommendations for a taxi vessel. Uh, first, you have the Pioneer P-Class. Okay, relatively cheap. Um, it's got a, a, a maximum passenger capacity of five people. Okay, so that's going to give you a relatively modest income. Now, one fully upgraded as far as um, engine and a cloaking device, you're going to have a relatively fast vessel capable of carting people around while cloaked. So basically, you don't have to babysit this thing. You don't have to worry if it's going to be safe. Because as long as you set it up to cloak while it's traveling, it'll be fine. And it can do its job while cloaked. Okay? Now, um, on the other hand, let's say you prefer to transport more than one, or sorry, five passengers at a time. Okay? Let's say you want to get the most people transported that you possibly can. Alright. So, my other recommendation is to have the Hauler P-Class. I think I've explained before about these letters. Okay, hold on a second. Let's grab my, my favorite pen, right? So you've got the Hauler A, you got the Hauler P, and you got the Hauler H. Then you have things that have an X at the end of their name, like the Flyer X or the Hornet X. Now, an A basically just means it's your standard vessel. There's nothing special about it at all, okay? Now, a letter after the name of the vessel, other than an A, suggests something special or modified about the vessel. In this case, the P means it's rigged to carry passengers. In this case, the H indicates its ability to, to uh, haul more cargo than normal. The X is indicative that it cloaks, okay? okay notice all the A's. Flyer A, okay? The Pioneer A, the Venture, the Drake, they're all normal ships, nothing special about them, okay? Shuttle, Raptor, Ranger, now here. In this case, for example, in case you're paying attention, you would now understand that this is just a basic Ranger, and this is a Ranger that can haul extra cargo. It's Ranger H. There's also a Ranger M. It does mining operations. Okay. But anyway, back to my recommendation. The Hauler P. Now, it is a lot slower than a, um, a Pioneer vessel. However, what I like about it is the fact that you can, you can haul the maximum amount of... Uh, cargo, or sorry, passengers, and thus get the most for your money with this vessel. Although technically, since the pioneers are so fast, you know, they can zip around making you money quicker in this, and thus they can pay for themselves faster. But then again, these guys are going to always go for, you know, the most money that they can get you at one time. That's their goal. So any place they go to, they're going to try to get the most passengers. So let me quickly demonstrate, okay? We're going to go over to this uh, outpost, equip this guy to the max, or at least as, as much as we need. And that's the nice thing. With these passenger vessels, you don't have to rig them with fancy weapons or fancy shields or engines or whatever. Okay? I'll just give you my quick recommendations for what a taxi should really have. Okay. 
Now, granted, it should probably have some weapons, but the cloaking device is going to be the main thing. So let's get in there and do this. First, get rid of this stuff. You don't need it. That's just my preference, though. Um, go to equipment. Uh, show com show compatible only. Um, you know these these turrets. Um, you want to put some guns on it? Go ahead. Um, just two lasers. Now, you could argue that um, it might be wise to at least give it the ability to, you know, shoot people if they want to mess with it, okay? And look at this, you can actually give it a military-grade launcher. And if it's just meant to go around, you know, transporting passengers... You could actually do that and give this thing a military launcher. We'll even, uh, we'll even keep the mine layer. Um, so, if you wanted to, you could give this thing a really fancy shield and drop 79,000 credits, but I'm not going to. Now, what I think is necessary, though, at the bare minimum, Max out the engine. Okay. Max, or not max out the shield, sorry. Just get a basic cloaking device. Okay. And then max out your passenger module. Okay. It is pricey, but it's going to pay for itself in the long run. Okay. So now what you have is a basic um, passenger hauler which can fight back if necessary, but it's not going to have to because it can cloak and it can fly fast, or relatively fast. And with the large passenger module, they're going to be going around, or it's going to be going around, I should say, automatically, it will be going around collecting passengers, dropping them off, and getting you cash, okay? And since there's always passengers to be hauled around, as long as you can find a place to dock, you can find people to grab and ferry around, okay? Now, since we already had, an, we already went ahead and, and gave this gave this thing a military launcher. Let's also uh, go ahead and upgrade its countermeasures. All right, and might as well upgrade this too, I suppose. Why not? Let's go all out with this thing. Um, power generator, capacitor. Okay, so look at that, pretty much a fully decked out um, military grade passenger hauler, okay, so this thing can go around um, doing a great job hauling its passengers around, and if anything tries to touch it, it can destroy them too. Okay. My favorite three to one ratio. And you still got room for cargo. Look at that. Alright. Um passengers. Now check it out. It can have ten maximum passengers on board. That's double the capacity of a Pioneer P class vessel. Which means you can go for the big money. Toggle waypoint. Let's pick them up. Now, if you want to make this into like an automated process, here's what I recommend. Go to um, ship orders. Now you don't need to put it on a fleet, although you can if you want to. But I recommend against it, okay? Because fleets tend to do things in groups. So, I'm going to say taxis, acting as a group, are going to try to go to the same place to dock and pick up passengers, or at least that's what I recollect. So, don't put them on a fleet. But anyway, 
So fleet settings is just going to refer to this ship only, okay? So it's basically orders specifically for this ship. So tell it, it, tell it, it to dock, tell it to prefer to cloak, and unless you want it to get into trouble, you pretty much just want to un, um, uncheck those. Although I think you can to intercept hostiles without a problem. And then just give it a base, wherever you want it to go as a base. Now, let's do this and have a little bit of fun. Let's quickly see if we can uh, get into a quick um, fight with this, uh, with this thing here. And, oh boy, hold on. Okay. And like I said, this is really not necessary at all. Okay. Again, let me review. Give it weaponry if you want. But this thing's not going to be meant for fighting. So re realistically, you just want a taxi. Keep the shields the way they are. Upgrade the engine to max like we did. Alright. Upgrade your passenger module to max. Okay. Put a basic cloaking device on it. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Okay? I'm just having a little bit of fun and putting weapons on this thing and decking it out. Okay? So we've done that. Let's see if we can uh, pick a fight somewhere in this area. Just for fun. Actually, now that I think about it, um, I might not be able to find that around here. Uh, look at that, we could drop off a Magnus if we had one to drop off, make some money that way. Um, hmm. Yeah, see, we don't want to do that, so anyway. Alright, that's fine. So let's just do a quick manual run. Get in this thing, and I believe we go to ship, passengers, you know, see how we already have the pink star there? We already have the waypoint set. Okay. So at this point, you can do this and automate the process. Ship, orders, now again reviewing, make it dock, make it cloak. You can either uncheck all these boxes, or leave this one checked. Okay, now if we did this for example, and told it not to cloak, and told it to do both attack hostiles and intercept them, you're gonna have a taxi driver who is basically gonna go out of his way to get into trouble to attack enemy ships, enemy stations, and it's gonna be a mess. And you're gonna have to babysit this thing. You don't wanna do that. So uncheck that, or both. Make sure he cloaks. Pick your home base. Now click fleet settings again. Go to special. And transport passengers. And off he goes. Now. Once he gets to his destination, what's going to happen? He's going to get there. Okay. He'll drop them off. And he'll probably either pick up passengers right at that station or he'll go to a nearby station to find more passengers to pick up to get the most money for you as possible. Okay? So eventually, within so many trips, this guy's gonna pay pay for himself, basically. So right here, right here you have a great investment that'll continue to make you um, tons of money, and that's that's really all there is to it. Let's go to um, property. Let's go back to the scrapyard. Enter. Again, let's get a taxi. Let's go to our uh, other sector there. Let's go to the military outpost that we were at before. Buy a ship. This time, let's get a Pioneer P and show you the difference, okay? Buy and enter. Let's equip it. And again, guys, like I said, um, you don't have to do any of this here. 
Again, we're just going to give it weapons because, well, why not? Left turret, uh, right turret, top turret, rear turret. Keep the mine if you want. I typically remove them. I don't use mines. Shields. Again, like I said, um, minimum for this operation, because it's just meant to be a taxi. Upgrade the engine, make sure it's at max. It already is. That's fine. Power generator, leave it alone. It's just a passenger taxi. Passenger module, max it out. Buy that thing. Then, give it a cloaking device. Done. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Okay. But again, we're just gonna have some fun, and we're gonna deck it out anyway. Alright. So let's go with uh, max shields. Max power generator. Maximum capacitor. And can we do this? We can. Great. Now let's go ahead and do um, trade. And let's give this thing... I want to say... 15, well, maybe 20 missiles. Hold on. Okay, and what else do we have? We have stuff we don't need. Alright, let's do some of these guys here, maybe 15. Alright, and can we do... Nice, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. So we got lots of missiles on this thing. We got ECM. And if, for whatever reason, we wanted to go to battle with this thing, we could do it. It's not going to be helpless. But again, like I said, guys, all you need... Okay, you can leave the weapons the way they are if you want to. And a few guns if you want. You don't have to. It's just going to be a taxi. That's its only job. So, max out the engine. Okay. Max out the passenger module. Make sure it can cloak. So all we needed to do is go fast, haul passengers, and be invisible so no one bothers it. At this point, go ahead and grab some passengers. And check it out. As opposed to the the freighter, the haul RP, it can only carry half the capacity. Okay, but it does go faster. So there's a trade-off, so it depends on what you prefer, speed or capacity. And since the initial investment is also cheaper, you really don't have to mess around that much. So pick your uh, passengers, toggle waypoint, pick them up, undock, cloaker if you'd like, and give this baby some orders. Same thing with the other one. It's just individual orders for the ship itself. Make it dock. Make it cloak. Again, either uncheck both boxes or leave only the bottom box checked. The bottom box being checked basically allows you to have this thing defend itself if for whatever reason it's somewhere out there and it's not cloaked. It'll at least fire back. Okay. But again, to reiterate the fact, if you don't have this checked, meaning it's going around not cloaked, and you have this thing also checked, you're going to have a ship that goes out of its way to engage enemy vessels and stations. You don't want that to happen. This is a taxi, not a tank. Okay? If you want to make a tank, we can do that too. This is not a tank. So, I'll check that. Check this. Check the other box too, dock and cloak. Um, again, give it whatever base you want. It doesn't really matter too much. Okay? In reality, you probably want to pick your own station if you have one. Okay? If not, 
Um, I prefer either, you know, probably a military base. Because at any military base you can repair and rearm. Then click on fleet settings again. Give it a special. Transport passengers. And there it goes. It's going to follow orders. Okay. And just like with the, um, the other ship we just bought and set up. It's going to go around and knock into buildings <laughs> and bump into ships, but it's going to do its job, okay? It's going to go around trying to get as many passengers in that thing as possible. It's going to drop them off to make the most money for you as possible. Now let's compare speed. This guy here, check it out. What is he doing? Right? Let's see if it's going again. Uh, anyway, this thing's covering it up, but... Okay. He's doing about... 38. I'm not sure if it's that... I'm not sure what that would be. Kilometers a second. Miles a second. I'm not sure, you know? This is... This is a, this is a science fiction game, okay? So, whatever. But he's going 38. Awesome. See? Right there at the bottom. Okay. Let's check out his associate. And he's going 32. So, if you think about it, the Pioneer P only goes a little faster than this guy does. So, in reality, um, if it was up to me, I think the choice is clear. Um, I would prefer having a Hauler P. Okay? As opposed to the, as opposed to having the Pioneer P, all right. And again, you can give it weapons and shields, just like the Pioneer class, and it goes almost as fast, and it carries twice the passengers. So I'm gonna say, in terms of taxi service, get a bunch of those, okay. It might be a little expensive at first, but slowly but surely, he's going to get you passengers, and he's going to get you money. Now let's check it. Let's check it out so far here. Transactions, and there you go. We've already made money. Look at that. That's the first one we had dropped. That's the first drop off. Nine thousand, and that was from the. Uh, the little Pioneer class vessel. Okay. 2,500. Uh, 2, and if you're wondering what this happens to be here, this is when a vessel will dock at your repair station and get repairs there. They pay you a tax. In this case, it's only about... Well, it is exactly 240. So that's not a lot. Um, anyway, now just a quick uh, preference thing, in terms of stations, if you want to buy a station, just like your first station, after you accumulate some money, um, let's see here, oh come on now, Bought me in, <laughs> so let's say you've got some money sitting around like I do, okay, Let's say you've been playing now for a couple days and your your file's getting b uh, bigger. You got some money. The question becomes, what should my first station be? Um, you know? What do I buy for a station? Alright. Well, if you want anything that's going to make you actual money, I think the cheapest thing is probably an orbital farm, honestly. Um, and if you have, if you don't have the expansion packs yet, you cannot get the refinery or the trade station. You can technically, you can technically get them, okay, but if you look at the cargo info, 
on, for example, the trade station, you're going to realize that the volume or the space it takes up in your cargo bay of a spaceship is it's too big. The maximum you can carry on even a Holler H class is 85. Okay, so obviously you can't do this. So it's almost like a tease, okay? It's almost like a way to encourage you to get the expansion pack. Because the larger carriers um, allow you to have, or allow you to carry the big things, the, uh, the refinery and the trade station. So again, let's say you don't want to wait around to be able to buy like something as big as a jewelry factory or here's a good one an arms factory okay and that's a pretty good thing to buy as an arms factory if you sell guns you can make good money all right same thing with jewelry pretty good money um but i would personally recommend if, you, if you're really in a big hurry to have your own station, either go for a military outpost or a repair shop. You might occasionally get ships that dock at your outpost to repair, but in terms of repair, ships will probably go to, their, to, your, uh, to your repair shop. Only because repair shops specialize in repairs and they don't charge as much as a military outpost would. But there's a big benefit with a military outpost. And I wish I could show you what it is. Um, actually, you know what? I can. So, anyway, if you don't mind waiting, let me show you what the difference happens to be or what the advantage is of having a military outpost of your own. Okay. All right, so let's check on our transactions. And... Well, so far, this is all we have so far. Okay, that's not a big deal. Let's check on our ships. Property. And... You know, you can check right here from the notes that they're still doing their job. Okay? And as you can tell, they always try to get the maximum number of people, okay, that they can carry. He was getting five, he's getting nine, okay? So, trying to get the most money as possible for you. Okay? Look at that, see? Dropping off nine. Picking up five. There you go. And one last check on transactions. And there you go. So, looks like the Pioneer has already made two trips. And the Hauler is working on making another trip. So we can probably expect to see more money from him soon. And that's how you start a taxi service. Buy as many as you like, and it's pretty much free and easy money. Okay? And pretty soon you will be swimming in credits. And that's, that's about it. So, since I mentioned it, let me go ahead and... Let's actually go to a different file. You gotta think, though, what I want to do... I know. Well, the old Captain Khan file. I've also used this one before for another video. Alright. So this will be a quick demonstration of why you might decide to want or get a military outpost as your first station and why it has certain advantages.
As you can tell, I do like this type of vessel. I like the Orions. Okay. They're fast. I don't like the slower, larger ships. Okay, I just don't. Um, not that they're bad, because they're not bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get into our property. I'm not gonna, not gonna bother giving the tour this time. Let's just hop into something. We got lots of stuff. So, anyway, bingo. And here is the advantage. Watch this. So let's say you buy a ship. Now first of all, check it out. 81,000 credits to buy it. Let's buy and enter it. Let's undock. Now let's turn around. Don't like the ship? Alright. We're going to sell it then because you don't like it. Now normally you're not going to get all your money back. That's just how the game works, right? It's uh, called... Um, What's the name of it when you, you drive your car off the off the lot, right, at, at a dealership, you know? It loses value, right, immediately. Not here. I just got a full refund. 81,000 credits. Neat, right? All right. Let's get, a, let's get a Hornet instead. I like the Hornet. It's faster. All right. Let's get some guns. Now check this out. This is interesting. The buy price and the sell price are identical. What's that mean? It basically means you can buy stuff and sell stuff without any loss. I mean, you can technically rent a ship and return it to your own base Sell it back to yourself, basically, and you've lost no money. So you could literally rent an army for free, turn around, sell it back to your own base, and get all your money back. Alright, now check this out. Let's go to cargo prices. Alright, and so watch this. Okay. So... Right now, um, I have a lot of places that sell weaponry, okay, and the price is all the same, right? And notice I sell them at the cheapest price available. Now the computers are going to be selling their weapons at a higher price than I do, okay? And there's only a few other military stations left that are allied to me. Now, I also um, I also buy weapons at the same exact price that I sell them at, okay? So, what you cannot do, okay, is you cannot learn, you cannot glitch the system by trying to sell low, okay? and buy high. Okay? In other words, you can't take weapons from your station for free. You still have to pay for them. Okay? And then you can't go around looking for a place that's going to buy them at a higher price because guess what? You also buy them at the highest price too. So... In other words... You can't make money this way. Okay, but the advantage is, again, you can basically rent an army for free, return it back to your own base, and get your money back. Okay, that's the advantage. Okay, so, again, in terms of, let's say you have a bunch of money laying around that you've been saving up, and you're thinking, I really want my own base right now. I don't want to wait. In which case, either get the repair shop, okay, which is almost the same price as a military outpost. Okay, check it out, right? In fact, you could argue that, um, in this case, uh, let's see, hold on. 
Yeah, actually, the repair shop costs a bit more than the military does. Um... But again, like I said, typically when ships do want to repair themselves, they might go to your shop to get repairs, and in that, and, and in that sense, your repair shop will actually make more money than your military outpost could. But it's not a lot. It's kind of like a trickle, okay? But, so, if you ask my personal opinion, um, being able to rent your own army and then sell it back later to yourself to get your money back is awesome, all right? That's a great benefit. On the other hand, if you don't intend on doing lots of battling with other uh, factions, then, honestly, get the repair shop. Save money on repairs instead. You know? There you go. Case closed. <laughs> and that's it. Um, That was the video on how to... On how to basically start your own taxi service and how to get it going, how to set up the ships. Um, yeah, so uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope if you're new to the game that you, if you're looking for a nice way to make money, I hope you give uh, starting a taxi service, if, yeah, go ahead, yeah, go ahead and start your own taxi service, give that a try, that should work for you, okay? It's simple, you're not going to lose your ships, and that's it, easy money. Alright, and again... As I fly off into the distance, this is Justin Pontarelli of the Avengers saying, see you later, and until next time. Bye, guys.